Susie's best known product would probably be rubber band tracks. In truth, most people probably think of Caterpillar tracks as steel links. Could you talk us through the rubber band concept and, and give us some details perhaps of some of the advantages of the design? Okay, so the composite rubber uh, band track, uh, well we try and get away from using the word band, it's the uh, composite um, rubber track, we got away from using the word band. Uh, what it is, it's made up as a continuous link, uh, a continuous band of uh, steel cord. Uh, that's why we're getting away from the uh, steel and the segmented type track. Uh, that is an uh, advantage in itself by getting away from the segments because there's no longer any weak points within the track. So for example, uh, with a steel track or a uh, segmented rubber track, uh, it still has weak points along the bushings and, and the joins, therefore there's still um, uh, some weaknesses within that track. Uh, the composite uh, band track or rubber track is uh, a complete uh, unit Therefore, there is no uh, possibility of any stretching, uh, giving it um, additional strength. Um, and, and you say it's a one-piece rubber composite rubber track. Um, what one would assume that the, the, the weak link scenario is, is why it's not segmented? Yes, it is that, and also the fact it's the uh, additional strength uh, uh, given by a composite rubber track. Uh, Susie uh, won't go along the, ro the route of uh, segmented track uh, for the reasons of the uh, weakness uh, and it's just never been one of our uh, products. And, and when one compares the, 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 the rubber band, I, I call rubber track. When one compares a composite rubber track with a steel linked track, um, what are the, the differences in, say, terms of traction, uh, durability, uh, life uh, on, off road, and that sort of thing? Okay, so as far as durability is concerned, the composite rubber track has, depending on the weight category of the vehicle, composite rubber track has probably 50% uh, additional durability to that of a steel track. Now the reason behind that is the composite rubber track, um, as I say, it's a complete, it's a complete section. There is no uh, maintenance required, uh, no changing of uh, track pads, for example. So if I use the uh, 32 metric ton vehicle as an example, they would have to change a steel track would have to change their track pads every 600 kilometres. Whereas the composite rubber track, there is no maintenance required. Therefore, there's no uh, requirement to change any track pads. And what about terms of traction? Because um, uh, you know, in really difficult, soft, muddy conditions, you, you can put cleats on, on uh, segmented metal tracks. What's the solution for a, um, a composite rubber track? Well, again, because it's a, a, a complete van track, it, the, it's been noted by the Norwegian Army in uh, uh, some exercises last year in 2007 that actually they, they gained more um, terrain that was uh, previously unaccessible using the, uh, the steel track on their CV90 vehicle. So it's been proven through trialling uh, that, uh, that the rubber track um, it has, has more traction. Now if you use a, a snow environment for example, again as you've suggested we, we can put on uh, chains um, onto a steel track but you can also put those chains, ice grousers, onto a composite rubber track um, giving it that extra traction. Uh, it does. You do have to reduce the speed somewhat um, if you're using the uh, ice chains um, but it does give that extra traction. And, and are there any weight limitations uh, when, when a composite rubber track is used? Yeah again it depends on the wheel configuration of the vehicle but SUSI are at the stage now where we're between 45 and 47 metric tons uh, on, on any armoured vehicle but again that depends on the wheel configuration of, of the vehicle but we've got vehicles as low as 4 metric tons right through to 47 metric tons. And what about terms of, of procurement cost and then through life cost for a, ru a, a composite rubber track compared to a, a linked steel track? OK, now a uh, composite rubber track in the initial uh, procurement is slightly more expensive, maybe 15% more expensive than that of a, a steel track. However, the life cycle cost over a 20 to 25 year period, uh, you, you can save up to 40% in life cycle cost. Now that's across the board, not just the track, that's the sprockets, it's the idler wheels, it's the road wheels, all those, all those different accessories of the system 
uh, there is no requirement to change them uh, if you have a, a composite rubber track. Now as an ex-tank uh, um, soldier myself in, in the British Army of 23 years, having served on Challenger 2 on a steel track, I know through my own experience that you have to uh, change uh, road wheels a lot, you have to change your sprockets a lot, and that is almost eliminated using the um, uh, CRT. Uh, hence the reduction in life cycle costs. Now, a, a, a common, well-known use uh, of SUSI rubber band tracks uh, are what, what are generally referred to as the BVs, you know, the, uh, the the two-unit articulated BVS-10 uh, and uh, STKs, Warthog and Bronco, that sort of thing. Where else might one find the, the composite rubber track within the military environment? Okay, well, the, the CRT, we've currently got that on between uh, 12 and 13 vehicles globally. Uh, you've mentioned the B vehicles, uh, BV vehicles. We also have a CV90, we have Borsuk, we've trialled it on the Warrior vehicle in, in, in the UK, um, and the M113 vehicle, which is stationed in uh, Malaysia, the US, uh, Thailand, for example. So we, we do have it on a plethora of vehicles across the whole weight range also. And, and, and you have previously said, I think, you can go up to around 47 metric tonnes. Um, what does the future hold? D d do you think that you will ever get up to main battle tank weight? Or, or is that simply uh, trying to rewrite the laws of physics? Yeah, I think so. I think moving up to main battle tanks, if you were to use Challenger 2 for, for an example, uh, you know, 69 metric tonnes, uh, I don't think a, a composite rubble track will ever get there. However, within the next uh, five years, I would be quite comfortable to say that CRT will make the um, 55 metric tonne uh, bracket. Um, the, the problem is the heat generation from, from uh, a, a vehicle weighing above 55 metric tonnes. You would have to widen the track so much it's just, uh, you know, it just wouldn't fit on there. Um, so, as I say, I'd be comfortable to say 55 metric tonnes within the next 35 years. Uh, main battle tank, that's, that's probably not in my lifetime anyway. And with regard to noise and vibration, one would assume there will be an improvement for the for the composite rubber track over a steel link track in those areas. Yes, absolutely. Again, using the UK Warrior vehicle as an example, uh, we we done the trial on that last uh, December, and it was reported uh, it was a 70% decrease in vibration uh, and up to 13 decibel decrease in noise. Now that's got two effects. One, it's uh, health and safety for the for the crew, less um, uh, whole body vibration for, for, for the crew uh, and obviously the ear, the um, health and safety to their ears uh, due to the reduction in noise. Excellent, thank you very much indeed.